Everybody good? All right. Well, Stevie, it's uh, not too often you get to face the same opponent uh, twice in a matter of weeks. So how has this camp been so far, and uh, how pumped are you for this opportunity to compete in the playoffs? Yeah, I mean, uh, I'm feeling great. Um, came out of the fight uninjured. Uh, I was able to get straight back to training. Um, and, yeah, I'm looking forward to the rematch. Take us through that last fight a little bit because the twister sub, you've mentioned how you've practiced that a little bit in camp. Um, take us through how that whole played out. Was that something that you guys prepared for entering that fight? Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously I went and watched some footage of Pettis. One of my teammates as well, um, Kieran, um, sent me uh, some footage of him escaping the back uh, and the the fact that, you know, he turns up in a guard. And Kieran, knowing that I hit that submission in the gym, was like, you'd be able to hit that twister on him if he does that. Um, so, yeah, I landed it multiple, multiple times in the gym. And uh, even me being careful in the gym, hitting it, it, it can hurt training partners as well. So I know for sure that Pettis was hurting um, after that fight with, with how much I put it on. Um, and yeah, like as soon as I got the back with the body triangle, I knew that that was a, a possibility that I could hit. Um, and yeah, I went for it and obviously got the win. And then last for me, um, we've talked before about the, the long layoff before the season, right? The almost three year layoff from competition. Um, how much does it personally mean to you to have this opportunity competing in the playoffs given everything you've had to go through to get to this point? Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, it means the world to me. I mean, if it, you know, if that day comes uh, and I could see it coming, where I win the the world title and I win the million dollars, I'll maybe cry a little bit um, because you know the 12 years that I've been training, um, it all would lead up to you know that time. So many emotions, so many ups and downs, the roller coaster. I mean, um, yeah, the big layoff, the semi retirement. Um, just everything, um, but yeah, it would, it would mean the world to me. Thanks, Steve. Always. Steve, there's always changes from one fight to another, so you have to assume that Anthony's going to make changes, being you just got the W off of him. So, what changes have you made, thinking two steps ahead of him? Eh, uh, I've not really made any changes. Um, obviously. Uh, just got back to training, you know, training hard. Got got a little plan with some some adjustments that that I've made in the camp. But I mean, as far as uh, the fight goes, I feel like you know it was uh, going well even before the twister. Um, I mean, I had the back. The reason he ended up on top of me and me submitting him is because I allowed him to turn up on top of me. So if I didn't do that, I would still be on his back with the body triangle pun obviously punching him and dominating that round. Um, the first round was close. You know, some people maybe gave it to him, some gave it to me, but I'm probably being biased. I feel like I won the round, I was pushing forward. Anything he landed on me, it was on my guard. My hands were up, like, he threw, he threw obviously, some flashy stuff. The hook kick, the, the spinning kick, but it was on my guard. It didn't phase me at all. I was the one pushing forward and landing the better shots, I feel. Um, but yeah, just pretty much I'm going to go in there and do the same job. I'm going to either uh, try and stop him on the feet or the ground or, you know, just push the pace and beat him regardless where it goes. Now, I'm just curious, looking forward is, I know you like going and doing BJJ, BJJ tournaments. Is that something postseason you think about doing it? Uh, so I've competed twice on Polaris. Uh, I've went 2-0. On that, uh, a flying heel hooked um, Paddy Pimlet, um, who's rising star at the minute, and I twistered the second guy the same same submission, slightly different variation. Um, Craig Yours, who's a judo and BJJ black belt. Um, so yeah, I've done well, uh, and yeah, that was just good to like stay active in between, you know, having MMA fights with COVID and not having signed to a promotion because I mean even though it's a bit different it's similar you know it's part of the MMA game but yeah maybe once I retire from MMA competition I might compete in a BJJ or um, see what happens but I'm I'm feeling like I'm back in my prime 
Um, you know, I'm I'm fully healthy. I'm still fairly young, and uh, yeah, I feel like I'm uh, going to be doing MMA for a good while. Uh, there's definitely some holes to his game, um, just like every fighter, but uh, the hype is real. I mean, he talks the talk and he's been backing it up. He's 3-0 in the UFC now, I think. Um, I went 3-0 in the UFC as well. Um, but uh, yeah, I mean, I beat him in a grappling comp, uh, not quite MMA, but we're the same weight. Um, and yeah, I, I'm probably being biased, but I, I believe I'd beat him. Uh, you know, whether it's on the feet or on the ground uh, in an MMA fight as well. But fair play to him; he's been uh, he's been doing well. Like I said, backing it up. He's got that polarizing kind of um, what do you call it? Um, polarizing kind of. Oh, I can't even think of the word. Kind of yeah, personality. Sorry, um, where. You're wanting to watch him, whether you want to watch him get knocked out or or get the knockout. So uh, he's doing the right stuff. Um, yeah, fair play, well done. Is there any part of you that is kind of thinking about a potential fight with him at some point? You know, if it, the stars were to align a, an MMA fight at that point? Um, well, he's obviously in the UFC. I'm I'm now fighting with PFL, uh, so it's it's quite a hard one to. But never say never. Like I said, I feel like I'm in my prime. I'm I'm healthy. Um, the reason, obviously, I left the UFC was due to injury. Um, and yeah, I mean, uh, you know, if I got offered a fight with Paddy and um, in the PFL or the UFC or whatever, if if uh, if I was getting paid good, and um, I'd be up for it. Yep. Uh, well, like I said, on that fight alone, like it wasn't like he was dominating or or maybe even winning before it. Um, a lot of the stuff I feel like you know, the flashy stuff he was doing, it wasn't phasing me. Um, and it was a close first round. I then took his back in the second round, and if I didn't allow him to turn up, uh, on top of me. Um, to get the submission, I would have still been on his back, punching him in the face. Um, the most dominant position in MMA, uh, probably the the body triangle. So I probably would have smashed him the whole second round um, and won that round or submitted him with someone else, like Red Naked Choke or a stoppage. So, um, yeah. Um, but I, I'll go out and get it done again. Uh, and then prove to everybody, you know, it wasn't a fluke because there might be some people that a lot of people hadn't seen that submission before, so that's maybe why they're thinking that, thinking uh, like that. Stevie, uh, your submission in June was labeled the submission of a year by uh, some people. How do you think uh, that win will raise your stock or raise your stock as a fighter? What was that, sorry? I said, how do you think your win against Pettis back in June raised your stock as a fighter? Yeah, I mean, the fact that I beat him, I was the underdog. Uh, the fact that I beat him and the way I beat him, obviously it went a little bit um, kind of viral, if you like, um, because of the submission. A lot of people hadn't seen it before. Um, so, yeah, it was cool that, you know, rather than, you know, if I rare naked choked him, maybe uh pro might not have got as much hype, but got a little bit more hype because... <laughs> the the submission that I got but uh, yeah it's raised it a little bit I mean I got some followers off it on social media um, and yeah and then hopefully you know keep keep that keep that up by getting the win again on Friday. Do you still believe uh, Pettis deserves the number one spot in the tournament? Uh, it doesn't really matter I mean one number one spot number four spot two three we're all we're all equal really and um, there's no advantage of being one or four or two or three, it's normal fights now. Um, you know, the first time I thought I had to get the finish to qualify before 12 and a half minutes, 
this time, you know, I could beat him by decision and and qualify as well. Uh, so yeah, to answer that question, whether you're one or four, I don't think it, don't think it makes a difference. Uh, Miles from Bookie's basement. How do you feel being the favourite going into this one after being a slight underdog in the last? Uh, I don't think it, I don't really look at the you know the betting odds too much because you know they don't always get it right. But it's it's pretty cool that at least they're noticing now, like um, you know, uh, like not just writing me off. That that feels a wee bit good, I suppose. Um, like getting swept under the carpet kind of thing. People are looking at me now and realizing, you know, I'm here to, I'm here to win. Um, yeah. And um, do you feel any pressure to get a finish again after the last fight? No. Um, I mean, just beating uh, Pettis by decision uh, is, you know, he's a big name. He's the kind of biggest name in the PFL. Um, so to get two wins over him, regardless if I stop him again or or decision him, um, yeah, that would be cool. But yeah, I'm going to be coming for the finish, uh, as always. Steve, uh, you were asked a bit earlier about Paddy Pimblett. Looking at like a lot of the British and Irish guys that came through the route that you guys did, does it frustrate you a little bit? Like I was just watching Reese McKee fight the other day, and I'm thinking he did not get the start in the UFC that like uh, like Paddy did in terms of the matchups and yourself similarly. Does it frustrate you watching someone like himself or Ian Gary? Get a, a particularly uh, a, a favourable run in the early, early one there. Uh, not really, because to be honest, I went three and zero in the UFC as well. Um, you know, I got the knockout against Leonardo Mafra in Scotland um, as my second fight. I got the the bonus of the night as well. I then fought in Ireland, went three and zero. I left the UFC with a seven and four record. Uh, probably left on the biggest one of my career at the time. I went over Michael Johnson. Um, it was just unfortunate, you know, what happened there. Um, I had a, an injury that didn't seem like a, a quick fix. There was also like visa issues a little bit. Um, trying to get a visa on time, even though I'd had a US visa before. Um, but yeah, now here I am, completely healthy. Um, with a four-year visa. Um, so sky is the limit, the way I see it. I'm, I feel like I'm in my prime and I'm... Uh, yeah, and Friday night is the, the start of the Stevie Ray 2.0. We're into the, the playoffs at this stage, and obviously there's only a couple more fights to go, and you could be walking home with that million dollars. Have you allowed yourself now to, to think about what you might spend it on? I mean, it's in, obviously, the, the back of the mind. Um, it's the it's the main goal. Uh, but and then the short-term goal and the main focus is on Pettis. Um, to beat him again, I kind of look past him. Although I'm confident, I've put in the work. I believe, uh, I believe I'm going to get the job done. I can't write him off. I can't underestimate him. He's going to be wanting to come back in there and try and get revenge. And um, and yeah, so all my focus is on Pettis. And then after I beat him on Friday, then maybe I'll think a wee bit more about the million, and uh, and then I'll just be focusing on whoever I've got. The other fight on the night, and, and, and do you have a pick for, for that one? Uh, so I've fought one of them and I've trained with the other. They're both uh, good guys. Um, so, nah, to be honest, I, I'm not sure how that fight can go, and I'm not really bothered either. I'm focusing on my fight, and then after that, you know, we'll, we'll take it for there, and then it's when it's time to think about that. Hey, Steven, it's Breeze with the MMA Breeze. Pettis is obviously a big win for you. You think. Uh, since you guys just faced off very recently, do you think he's going to come in with many changes, or what do you expect will be different about this bout compared to the first matchup? Eh, hey, I don't think there's going to be anything different, really. Um, I mean, the only there's a few things maybe different. That uh, I mean, the the first fight he was already guaranteed through, um, so. You know, it might have been a little bit different in his mind, you know, him trying to play it safe or whatever. But really, at the end of the day, when you're fighting a guy, you're trying to win. He was trying to win. He was hitting me with everything. And I took it and kept coming forward. Um, uh, like I said, nothing really fazed me. Um, I feel like the fight was going well. I managed to get the stoppage. Um, I feel like I've got the psychological and mental edge because I came out of that fight uninjured. He was slightly injured. He'll know himself that he's probably not been able to put 100% into the fight camp. 
Um, having damaged cartilage ribs, he's probably had to play it safe a wee bit at the start of the camp. But regardless, even if he is completely ready and he's, you know, trained his arse off for the last six weeks and he's the best pass, I still believe that I'll get the win on Friday. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Before that, I think it was Michael Johnson. Um, Pettis has been the UFC world champion, um, and just the guys, you know. Even though, but Johnson had fought, you know, some of the best guys in the world as well. Um, but because Pettis has, you know, won the actual title, then uh, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so I've got a few guys. Uh, Dylan Took. Um, he originally was training at SBG. Um, he now trains with us at higher level. Uh, rising, rising kind of prospect, somebody to look out for. Um, so yeah, him, Danny Henry, back training. He's fighting on UFC Paris. Uh, so he's a uh, he's uh, been a sparring partner. Mark Ewan who just got the one in EFC over in South Africa. Um, and then, you know, lo loads of other kind of up and coming guys. We've got a strong team um, at higher level MMA in, in Scotland. Great. Uh, also, what would you say so far, uh, having joined the PFL, uh, what, what good things have they done to help promote your career uh, since joining the PFL? Yeah, I mean, I feel like I'm just back where I belong, um, fighting. Um, doing doing what I'm good at, doing what I love. Uh, you know, it feels just right up there with the same as how you know the UFC uh, kind of top professional uh, guys. Um, and yeah, obviously fighting Pettis twice has helped. Um, the you know getting my name out there and stuff. But I still believe that you know, obviously they're promoting him. Um, and you know he's the he's the face of the kind of uh, show. But once I beat him again on Friday, then it's time to see who the new rising star is. Awesome, thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you. It seems, it seems like COVID is still a big problem in Scotland. Can you talk about how the virus is still affecting the country? Uh, so things are yeah, there's just some. I'm trying to think. Uh, so it's kind of getting back to normal. I mean, there's. I don't think you need to wear masks now, and uh, the social distancing's all the way. I mean, it was pretty um, tight a while back, but it looks like it's going in the right direction. Um, yeah. And last uh, for me, you recently saw the new Minions movie with your family. I was hoping you could give us a review of that. Uh, yeah, it was good. It was my my daughter's first time at the cinema. The the youngest one, she's two. Um, it went well. We weren't sure how it was going to go if she would uh, sit through the whole movie, but yeah, it went pretty good. Uh, I like doing stuff like that, you know, stuff with the family, uh, cinema. Um, it was a good day. Um, it would have been better if I could eat a lot of uh, M and M's and popcorn and stuff like that, but it was pretty good. Awesome, great to hear. Thanks, Stevie.